This is the answer video for topic 3 tables and graph, uh, all the worksheets. Okay, this is um, C2, so let's get on. Okay, uh, for C2, we actually did a, um, a, a tally of what the student prefer, uh, our P4 I students, what do they prefer. Okay, so this is the, the result. Okay, for the preference towards this um, see, uh, season seaweed, Oreo, M&M's and then uh, Wang Wang rice cracker and then um, uh, Mami uh, noodle snack. Okay, one thing to, to uh, take note is like when we are writing the tally, okay, you have to be in the way that easier to read. Okay, so like example, okay, one, two, oops, sorry, yeah. Okay, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so this one is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Same thing. As you can see, uh, it is not very difficult to write um, the tally. Just remember, do not write like this. Okay, we have discussed this one before because if you will write a lot of them, you won't see the difference. You don't see roughly where, where is the stock. If you slant it, like what, we, what I do here, you can actually see that uh, yeah, you can see them in groups of five. Okay, the key is to see, uh, make it easier to count. Okay, so 16, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, so that's it. Huh? Quite simple. Huh? That's it. So um, the snack that is most preferred, as you can see from here, is the Mama uh, noodle snack. Okay, then how many votes did they get? 16 snacks. Uh, 16 votes okay so uh, any less than um, five votes no there isn't any okay so okay actually you can see that um, yeah the number is actually more than our class but because students are allowed two votes okay so take bad in my uh, two votes okay so okay uh, is there any snack that have the same yes the seaweeds and the Oreo biscuits. Okay. Okay, next question we talk about um, can this result be used to represent the school uh, the, the school's preference? Okay, it's the answer will be no because first of all um, our class size is actually much smaller um, than the, the whole school or a small very small a uh, fraction of the school population is not very really representative okay and then furthermore there is um, our students have may have a very different taste from the rest of the class okay like uh, different from p1 students taste or p4 p6 student taste okay, every year student change okay and just to compare between the ge class even for the 4i and 4h okay um, their tastes are very different okay very very different okay so you can see that uh, obviously it cannot be used to represent the preference or not even for the GE class okay so now um, what are the factors that the auntie need to consider when deciding a snack of course the price and the amount of snacks first thing okay the next one will be uh, is it a healthy choice okay this one is actually one of the very important key the auntie will not be able to sell anything that is not healthy okay and then um, very important also is it easily available okay and then uh, does the discount is there any discount or vendor this one actually was brought up by one of the students for one of the students so okay if they have discount they will actually force the uh, no uh, attract the auntie to buy more right or, or want to sell the, the items okay next one we talk about this uh, there is this one little practice okay the number of um, uh, grades per for, for the students okay um yeah i say again uh, actually this one shows you the grades of for these students okay then now here you you write down you have to tally i mean a table okay so you need to write this one is a, the title of this column this one is the title of this column and this one is the title for this okay so grade a you have this many tallies Okay, you just count them as you go down. Just cancel, cancel, you go down. Okay, then you have this frequency here. Oh, huh? quite simple. 
and so on. Quite, yeah, quite easy. Okay. One thing to note is like um, the part here if it's slightly different as long as it is the factors that anti. Okay, because some of you may not feel very strongly about this, you want to add in any other things as long as it is reasonable, uh, it should be okay. Okay, just come and see me if it's very different. Okay, so we have this um, um, C three uh, A where we talk about um, the M and M's number of colors of M and M's inside each of the packs. Okay, so okay. As everybody have different answers, so we cannot uh, fill out all this. Okay, but most important thing is that when you're doing the tallying here, okay, remember to use the right right way to tally. Like so, let's say six, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, and so on. That's all. That that thing. That's about all. Okay, similar here we have as you can see that the um, the numbers that you have in your table will have to correspond with the number here okay so I'm gonna, I want to talk about more on the titles and of the whole graph and the title of the axis okay so for this one okay uh, the title have to represent uh, both the axis as well as the uh, both axis uh, okay and, and some background information if you need it to explain what is this okay so we can start with the um, axis okay first of all as you can see here these are the different colors of the m and so the x axis should be the color of the m and color of the m and m chocolate okay m and m's okay we ask okay that will do okay then we have the y axis y axis is the number of m and m's Okay, so this uh, title of the graph will be okay number of of each M and M's of each oops, sorry each color. Okay, number of menu of each color, so you can see that you can tell that uh, which color have which one. Okay, uh, one thing to note, remember when you shading. Okay, we shade. Let's say there is only one blue. Oh, sorry, I haven't talked about the the axis. Huh? Okay, so this one should be zero. Okay, this one should be one, and two, three, and four. Please do not write here. Okay, don't write here. Okay, write here like this because this one is not an indicator, so it's not like a line. So this one actually doesn't fit the one. Okay, so remember the the numbers have to be on the the, the, the line here. Okay, so we have this five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, so if let's say there is only one blue, remember to shade this, align the side to side. Okay, like so. Okay, to your best ability. Okay, try not to shade like this. Okay, this is not sh not a proper shading. Okay, so now let's take a look at the advantages and disadvantages of presenting in graph rather than table. Okay, the advantage of using graph is that it provides a visual pictorial representation of the data. Okay, so you can see the amount, just a visual amount. Okay, uh, uh, roughly how much. Okay. And then a trend whether is it going up or anything huh? so it's like um, it's rate the most or and so on so uh, as you can see if you're using a picture is actually is a good representation of the uh, a good representation for comparing um, the colors okay the tallest one will be okay because you don't need to see exactly how many numbers you just want to know who which one is the most huh? That but that brings us to our disadvantage. Okay, because 
the graph itself is not as exactly you want to get the exact one you need to compute the number so in this case you need to actually compare okay from from the height of this and then you need to compare with the side the y axis in this case to find out number of m and m's okay so and then because it's all graphical you need to use uh, it is much more difficult to to compute in a graph format okay Okay, as for this uh, worksheet C3B, we, we put it aside first because we haven't uh, got the time to do this. Okay, so uh, I will make another video when we are doing we have finished this. Okay, so this is uh, the bar graph worksheet. So, okay, quite simple. This one, just remember that this is the title that we already discussed and then vertical axis is this. So, okay, the question asks, which type of data is represented by this um, horizontal scale? Remember, it's separate items because they're all different items. Okay, and then the number, the, the data that is on the y-axis is actually the number count, the counting the number of students that is in each activity. Okay, so from this, this graph, you can know that uh, most popular recess activity is actually eat at the canteen. Okay, how many, the next question is how many pupils are there in the cold class? So this one uh, give you a number of everyone in the class. So you just add all the thing, all the the numbers together. You will get twenty five. Okay. Okay. So let us take a look at this. Okay. This is the horizontal bar graph. Okay. Horizontal bar graph actually is exactly the same. Okay. So let us answer the question first. Okay. Uh, is that difference in presenting the the thing, the Data actually is the same. Okay, the data are the same, but uh, the graph become horizontal. That's all. Okay, so the presentation is different because the graph bar is actually horizontal, but the data, the numbers are still the same. Okay, so when do we prefer a horizontal bar than a vertical bar? Actually, it depends on first of all, depend on the type of data we're talking about. If we're talking about like uh, something about length, width, okay, that that is horizontal, we can actually use this. Okay, uh, horizontal bar. Okay, if not uh, like height, we use the uh, the vertical bar. Or height of the building, height of the person. Okay, so depend on what kind of uh, data we have, and also depend on the space available. If let's say the space we have a lot of vertical space, okay, then we just use the vertical bar graph instead of horizontal bar graph. Okay. Okay, so um, let's take a look at this uh, stack bar graph. Okay, step bar graph really mentioned that it is just stacking up okay, um, the information. Okay, actually it's actually breaking up for our this case, it's actually breaking up. Just now we see that um, the number total number of students, but now we break them up further to, to divide uh, not only by activity, also by uh, how, uh, how many boys and girls in each activity. Okay? So you can see that okay, the data that we can get from this one step bar graph Okay, or any of the set bar graph um, is actually the number of boys which is this one this part here and the number of girls and then uh, total number of students you can get from here okay so this one is actually um, three boys zero girls and then the total is three okay so what is the most popular among the girls is eat at canteen okay so which is the least uh, popular activity among the girls uh, so you find the one that has the least number of girls which is the soccer okay so talking in girls I uh, thought uh, number eight the how many girls choose to talk to the friends so you have to remember you are finding out talking to friends okay you must remember this this one here which is four is representing the total boy and girls okay you want you want is this part here so you need to find out the total minus away the boys so you will get the girls okay so it's four minus one plus three okay now let's go on to the multiple bar graph multiple bar graph quite simple okay um, it's similar to this uh, step bar graph but as you can see it look very different from this uh, step bar graph or the singular bar that means they have everybody they actually break the boy and girls into two uh, like separate bars like this 
Okay, boy is on this side, girl is on this side. Okay, but the uh, the end result is the same. Huh? But you what you see is like um, boys for one uh, one bar for boy, one bar for girls. Okay, so now uh, take a look. Huh? Okay, which activity is a, has the equal number of boys and girls? You can see from here, boys and girls. Okay, they read the same. Okay, the number of boys and girls uh, like to read books. Okay, are the same. So, uh, how many boys prefer, uh, prefer freeze than uh, how many more boys than girls prefer this freeze than milk? Okay, so boys, more boys, huh? So we see freeze and milk. Okay, yes, there is more boys than girls. So what we are looking for is this part here. Okay, so we need to use the boys minus the girls. Okay, which activity is more preferred that by the girls than the boys? So you are looking for one bar. That is the the white color bar is taller than the the what we call the shaded bar. Okay, so the only one is talk to friends. Okay. So how many more girls prefer to eat at the canteen than read a book? Okay, eat at the canteen and read a book. So, so we're talking about girls. So we're comparing only the white one. Okay, eat at canteen is this one here. Then so this one is four. Then we have this read a book is. Two, so we need to find out the difference. This is this is the difference here. Okay, so it's four minus two. Okay, quite easy. So now let us talk about this part here. What is the advantage of using the different bar graph? Okay, the multiple bar graph as we discussed already. Okay, for multiple bar graph is good when you can see uh, because you can see um, the total num uh, total number of boys or total number of girls. Okay, for each activity. Okay, you can compare between. Um, Within the same activity, you can compare the boys, okay, or, or even compare with the girls, okay. This one also you can, huh? okay. So the advantage of a stack bar graph, you can see the total because it's stacked up together. It's easier to see the total. Not that it, okay, but both of them, they, get, uh, they can see the total. You can just add up. But the easier one is actually stack bar graph, okay, stack bar graph to, to see because they really stack up to the total, okay. So, and one more thing is like, um, one more advantage of the stack bar graph is that you can compare the total. So stack bar graph actually is mainly for if total is your emphasis. You want to see total number of students. Okay. But in additional you want some other like how many boys and girls inside. Yes, you can do that. Okay. But the thing is like the main thing is you can see the total easily. Okay, as for this uh, multiple bar graph, we're comparing two different activity, uh, two different group of people within the same activity, then this multiple bar graph will be more preferred. Okay, now move on to line graph. This is this and the last uh, worksheet is just an intro worksheet, okay? Just to, to introduce you to bar graph and line graph first. Okay, so let us look at line graph now. Okay, so, okay, the data that is represented in this horizontal. Okay, horizontal in this case actually is a, a separate item, okay? But this separate item is uh, slightly different from the one that you do see in bar. Okay, for this one, if it's month, you can treat it as a separate bar graph. But in if you want to find out, like in between, like uh, between February and Jan, uh, January and February, uh, the middle of January, you can actually draw a line up here and can still find the 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 result. Okay, but I think it's like the time where you find the active um the information the data right is actually only on these points here as you can see from here okay so january's result february's result is here march result is here okay okay just remember that um yeah it can be both but the thing is that it is still considered a separate item okay so what kind of data do we have here this one is actually uh, not number count but rather the measurement okay it's not the group measurement but just the measurement okay so now uh, what are what is the height of the plant in February? This one is one plant only, huh, by the way. So, height of the plant in February. So just draw up the line here. Okay, you can see that this is eleven cm. Okay, how much taller was the plant in April than March? April is actually twenty five. So March is actually um, seventeen. So you minus these two together, you get eight. So how much taller? You actually grown uh, eight cm more. Okay. 
Okay, we'll go on to this uh, multiple line graph. Just now, single line graph talk about one plant. Okay, the multiple line graph actually talk about uh, you can use it to represent two graph, uh, two plants. Okay, change these two plants, then we can compare uh, the growth of these two different plants. Okay, correct. So, okay, and you can at the same time you can tell for individual. Huh? So for this one, okay, the height of this. Uh, B. Okay. First of all, when you look at this thing here, remember to note down which is the A. Okay. This for this one, uh, the 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 way to represent is not very clear. Okay. They should have used a circle instead uh, of a of a. Okay. Because when you're moving up and down, okay, that does, doesn't look very okay. So anyway, you just write down. Okay. The the one on the top is actually B first. Okay. So this one is B. Okay, and this one is A. Okay, so it will help you to, to, to see. Okay, don't need to always refer to this key or legend here. Okay, so height of B is actually, uh, in January, is actually this part here. Okay, B. So it is 8 cm. Okay, how much, to which plant was taller on the 1st of April? 1st of April is here. So B is still the taller one. Okay. And which mine is the difference in the height of the plant the greater? So you're looking for a gap that is the biggest. So obviously this is the largest gap. Okay. So it is in the month of uh, March. Okay. They're not asking how much is the difference, but which month. Okay. So read the question properly. So what is the sum of the height of plant A and B? Okay. In sum of plants, so you can add two together. Okay. The main result. So 29 and 22. Okay. So add up together will be 51. Okay, now go on to talk about uh, when is uh, appropriate to use a um, bar graph instead of a uh, line graph instead of a bar graph. Okay, so it is depending on what kind of um, data that you are collecting. Okay, let's say an example here. Okay, if the data we have we are collecting here is actually what we call a con more continuous. Okay, I think okay, the plant don't just shoot up just all overnight became like this okay actually you will grow slowly slowly up okay so but the the data we collect is on this and this okay like this point and this point here so but the thing is like in between here there is actually two value so it's the middle of january and february okay so for um, data like this please remember it is more appropriate to use line okay or even if we don't use line it's okay but the thing is like uh, for certain other objects, let's say if it is for bar, okay, like um, um, John, then uh, Fabian, okay, so there is no connection, there is no in between Fabian and, and, and John, so right, so there is no like half John, half, okay, so uh, in that case, we cannot use line graph, okay, we don't, it is more appropriate to use a bar graph, okay, so it depends on the thing yeah? and then um, okay so if you have let's say you have weights and uh, weights or height of something over time so as times go by okay, or distance over time item over time all this okay remember you use line graph more appropriate okay okay now uh, move on to this uh, problem solving this one is the actual practice that you guys are supposed to do huh? so let us take a look at this okay Okay, for first one, okay, um, this is a horizontal bar graph, okay, horizontal bar graph, where the the, the separate items is uh, the y axis now, which which is this uh, this, uh, this, okay, sorry, so uh, it shows you, okay, remember to read this sentence, okay, it shows you the number of t-shirt that this person, Mister Lee, sold from Monday to Tuesday, okay, so you have this different amount on which day. So on which day did he sell 38? That is very obvious uh, on Wednesday. Okay. So how many t-shirts did Mr. Lee sell on Tuesday then? Thursday. Tuesday he actually sold more. Thursday he actually sold much lesser. So write down. Okay, so as a, it will be in, it will be good if you can actually write down all the numbers here. Okay, example for this one, okay, it's actually 24. Okay. Tuesday is actually your 35 okay then Wednesday is actually 38 and then Thursday is actually your uh, 18 okay so 
this one when we are calculating the answer will be easier okay so you don't need to refer again okay now so if uh, mr lee so monday to friday so um so 150 tissues from from monday to friday so how many so on friday this one this data here only show you monday to thursday so what you need to do is that you need to add up all this okay and then you must minus from uh subtract from 150 so this is what I exactly do uh, so it's 36 okay you don't need to write please remember don't use um this okay we are shouldn't use uh arrow uh, don't use arrow okay don't use arrow just leave a space in between okay don't use arrow uh, okay 36 t-shirt is sold on friday that's all okay now um this is a vertical bar graph so the question is um what is the most popular sports among you can see the tallest one okay quite simple so it's uh 40 it's okay we are you should always write down first right so it's 25 this is 30 this is 40 this is um 15 and this is 10 okay so um soccer which is the tallest bar okay is the most popular amount of students so um how many student name either choose hockey or basketball so in this case you must include the hockey okay and then you also must include basketball because the student can be either hockey which is acceptable in this case and also um either they are uh, hockey or they can be also basketball so basketball is included hockey is also included so you need to add these two okay 25 and uh which one a uh, basketball and 30 so you get 55 okay remember number statement in this case is very important always write number statement to spec it up so if your calculation is strong you still can get the part marks okay then now how many more students more students okay when you hear more students it means there must be some subtraction going on okay so it's a uh, difference okay so you have uh, soccer then swimming so soccer is 40 and then swimming is 15 so you minus subtract of 40 minus 15 okay this may not be the case for our school huh? because of the <laughs> yeah school maybe will be the other way around huh? okay next uh three times as many students choose these sports than uh, tennis so tennis as you can you know is 10 so is there any any one of them that is more than 10 see if you write down here if you if you note down all these things here you can see very clearly that 30 is his, which is basketball huh? so yeah so that's the one huh? so it's helpful to have all the numbers ready okay the next question is uh, a multiple bar graph okay so let's take a look so how many students in 4a okay there is uh, 4a is the one shaded and then the 4b is the one that is not shaded okay so how many students okay same thing i uh, write the numbers for this okay so i write down already so uh, let's take a look okay the number of 4a have a perfect attendance in how many students all these numbers shows the uh, students with perfect attendance okay in january that is 12 um for 4a and then okay so that's it <laughs> that's the answer huh? so which class has the more student with um perfect attendance so it's comparing 4a and 4b okay which one has more so uh, in february you can see from here 4a obviously have more so 4a is the one okay so what is the total number of students with a perfect attendance in uh from march from these two class so you are looking for the sum of this um for a plus for b how many to what is the total number okay so add together you get 37 okay how many fewer students have perfect score um in april than march from these two class so now first of all you must know okay you must add total number in april first okay april april is this much okay it is 31 then the total number of uh student in uh, March is 37, uh, 37 okay so you use 37 you want difference okay so 37 minus 31 which is 6 okay in this case actually uh, that's why in this case if you're looking for discount information then you should try to have 
or maybe a stack bar graph instead of a multiple bar graph but then again you are there is other things that you need huh? so yeah just remember huh? okay let's take a look at this um, stack bar graph question so first thing you want to see is um, uh, maybe in this case uh, it is a bit more difficult because the scales are different let me, let me just explain again okay here okay you you can see from here five of this space one two three four five make up for hundred so each one of this space is actually representing 20 correct so five times 20 equals hundred so yeah correct huh? so let us come back here again okay so you can find out the answer huh? the, 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 the height of the thing so now you have how many books were borrowed all together on Thursday and Friday so you are looking for the total okay Thursday and Friday so uh, 580 and then this one is same as 580 so you just add everything together mm -hmm. huh? so you get 1160 or 1160 okay then how many more friction books than non-friction books okay on Wednesday so uh, Wednesday friction books okay uh, the total here is actually uh, telling you okay non friction is only this part right okay so you need to find out uh, what how much uh, non friction book first which is this part here which is you need to use this one to minus of the friction uh, the friction book okay so you get 60 friction books from subtracting 200 from 260 Okay, so you get this one is uh, 60 and then this one is 200. Okay, so then you use uh, this 200 minus away 60, there is a difference. Okay, it's actually a multiple step question. Now. So this one most likely will be um, two marks, more, worth more marks than this. Okay, okay now take a look at this uh, question G, uh, 4G, which is a fraction question. Okay, so it is a bit unfair nah, to, to actually ask you guys to do <laughs> fraction of this. Nah. Just just remember that um, in the exam, because it will cover fraction and then in your, uh, and this, it's possible that they give you this question, okay? Okay, so express the number of uh, fraction, fraction, non -fraction, uh, non fraction books as a fraction of uh, uh, friction books. So you are looking for uh, non friction out of the friction book okay so this one actually um, yeah a bit challenging uh, okay so all you need to do is find out total number of books okay which is 300 uh, uh, oh, sorry 800 books right but I think is um, you first find out number of friction non friction book is 300 friction book is 500 so you just okay there is a typo here uh, actually it's because of the yeah, supposed to to close up, okay. So in this case, once you have three hundred out of five hundred, okay, uh, just simplify it, three fifth. And that's the answer. Okay, now how many friction book were borrow over the five days period? Okay, five days period. How many friction book? Okay, so you need to find out all total friction book. Okay, so you're talking about the grayish, the the shaded ones. Okay, so. Total number 300 plus 240 plus 200 and so on so forth. All this, the shaded one all add together, it will give you 1530. Okay. Okay, now another type of ways they can uh, ask you to, they can test you, huh, is to give you a, a graph. In this case, it's a bar graph. Okay, and then uh, the table. Okay, so now what you need to do is like just. Um, they will put something missing here, nah, huh? either what the table and then or either this. For this case, there is two two of them missing. So, uh, they told you the most important thing is that you must remember to read this part here, because if you don't read this part here, you will not know that total number of students is forty. Okay, forty. That means, uh, you have this, all these 10, 12, 4 and eight. So you must add these numbers and then subtract it from forty. It will give you the six. Okay, and then once you got this one ready, just transfer the num the answer into your 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 missing uh, bar. Okay, 
Okay, and that's it. Okay, so one thing to note: this one, this one is in increment of two. Okay, so every every line here represents here uh, two, four, six, eight. Okay, so with six, you just remember six. Okay, ten, ten, and so on. Okay, so yeah, nothing, not that not difficult. Huh? Should be quite easy for you guys. Okay, this is a uh, quite a trick question, huh? Okay, they told you. Okay, we'll read the question properly. Tell you that this uh this is the total volume in of the cylinder. That means just imagine a uh, 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 sorry uh, uh, measuring cylinder. Okay. Okay, this volume. Okay, there has a certain amount. Okay, in this case is twenty mL. Okay. Then later one of the dice is being dropped inside. Okay, drop inside. Then after that the water increased by this much. So the, the new measurement is 25. And get, carry on, okay? And so on and so forth. So uh the the dice are actually of same size. So we have same volume. Okay. So drop inside as you can see from here. Every dice drop inside there is a 5 ml. Uh, increment okay so now you want to know that you want to find out how much will it be how many more dice how many more dice they're not asking you how many dice in the in the is inside okay but they want to know how many more dice to increase from this 45 to your 65 so first of all you know it's know that okay 65 minus 45 okay give you 20 Okay, each dice is actually uh, 5 ml, so you 20 divide by 5, give you 4. So you have 4 more dice. Okay, by the way, uh, uh, dice multiple, uh, what, uh, in plural form, I think it should be die, not dice. Okay. Okay, this is the last worksheet, which is... Um, line graph word problems okay so we have this okay this line graph shows the height of the plant uh, measuring at uh, this time okay every day at this time okay for five days so this one actually is yeah very difficult to find a plant that actually can grow so fast huh? uh, maybe bean spout okay <laughs> okay but anyway okay just for the exercise okay height of the plant okay on Tuesday, so you just measure here. Tuesday, it is in between four, and each one of these tick is actually one. So it's zero, one, two, ah, okay. So this one must be three cm. So next one, uh, what is the increment in the plant from Thursday to Friday? So Thursday is eight, then Friday is twelve. So it's twelve minus eight will give you four cm. Is the increment okay? So when did the plant grow by three cm in one day? So you must be looking for the height, the difference in the height of the thing is three cm. One, two, three, three cm. So it's Tuesday to Wednesday. This is the interval, okay? One day interval, okay? This is the interval. So actually, this one, uh, which interval lah? Uh, suppose we, which interval, okay? Will did the plant grow by three cm? Okay. Next one. How many days did the plant take to grow from two cm, okay, to twelve cm? Okay. The thing is, like, okay, in this case, you are looking for how many intervals are there? One, one day, two days, three days, four days, not five days. Okay, remember, not five days. It's four days. One, two, three, four. Okay. Okay. Next question. Um. The line graph shows the um, number of visitors in the park from this time to this time, 6 to 10, okay? Um, one thing to note, uh, I'm, there is a um, typo in the answer key, so, yeah, okay, I may have marked you wrongly, so please remember to, okay, if you if I mark you wrongly, please just uh, bring back to me and I'll remark for you, okay? So, let us get to the question, okay, uh, wait, uh. okay, so, first thing, Okay, uh, what time is there 60 visitors okay, in the park? So you just find look for 60, okay, then the mark here is 7 a.m. Okay, you can see the corresponding time is 7 a.m. So how many uh, visitors are there at 8 o'clock? 
okay, this is the one that is the mistake. Huh? 8 o'clock, we move up. you see that this is the point. Then you move here. It should be 130. 30, okay? So, instead of 120, I think I may have marked some of you wrong. Okay, so uh, at what time are there three times as many visitors in the park than six uh, than 7 a.m.? 7 a.m., you actually have 60 people. Okay, so... Uh, you're looking for three times as many as 60 so it's 180 you're looking for so 180 is here so you look down it is actually at 10 a.m okay so within uh see within which one hour period okay remember sometimes just now the question they can actually ask you one hour period okay uh did the number of visitors increase the most so you are looking for the one that increased okay from here to here the height of this okay is the most Okay, now this one is okay, actually here to here from 0 increase to 60 so this part here is 60 okay from here to here actually is 60 plus uh, 60 to uh, seven, uh, 130 so it's 70 okay and then these two I think is the highest really so you can see that 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. actually will give you the the highest increase Okay, the most increase. Okay, so find the increase in the number of visitors from 8 to 10. Okay, 8 to 10, 8 is here. 8 is 130. Uh, 10 is 180. So there is an increment of uh, 50 visitors. So you just use 180 minus this one. Okay, number statement, very important. Okay, now the next question, uh, quite interesting. Okay, um, let us take a look at huh? Okay, this question tells you the Ali's uh, journey from home to school. Okay, um, there's a part that he walk and there's a part that he take a bus. Okay, he left us home at six thirty, then he walked to the bus stop. He waited for the bus and then he bought the bus. Okay, so this part here is actually walking. This part here is walking. Okay, as you can see, the walk is you take. Uh, okay, this is it's actually quite amazing. Eh? Okay, 15 minutes to walk 1.5 kilometers. Okay, quite a walk, quite a walk. Eh? Okay, so after that, then the bus actually uh, from then this part here. Why is it horizontal like this? Is because the time passed, but the distance never changed. Okay, so he's still at the same bus stop. Okay, from this time to this time. Yeah, after that, he, he once the bus come, he bought the bus. The bus actually travel, okay. Of you can see the 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 slope, is actually steeper here. Okay, he actually went up higher. Then this one is slower. So this one actually is quite fast uh, for human to walk. Okay, okay. By the way, okay. How uh how far is the the school from his house? So this is the distance from the house to the school. Okay. When you reach the school, so we're talking about this is his home, okay. You walk, okay. This is the distance, so his home is actually 4.5 kilometers or four and a half kilometers, okay. For this one, I think four and a half is also acceptable, okay. Or this one, okay. This one is quite an unfair one because you, you are requested to, to use a fraction or decimals, which is yeah, okay. But anyway, okay, just try our best, huh? I think you try your best, so yeah, not to worry. Huh? So how long was his bus journey? Bus journey. We're talking about taking a bus. So bought the bus here, then from here to here. So 6.50 to 7 o'clock, which is 10 minutes. Please don't use this one to minus this. Once you do, do this, time cannot be minus. Okay, time has no... is a... Um, is a... Uh, not a value that you can subtract from. Okay? It is a nominal number, okay. It doesn't have value to subtract, okay. So remember, just either you use a draw line, uh, draw a timeline, which is something like this, okay. This one is seven a.m. Okay, time. Remember, move left to right, huh? Six fifty a.m. So in between here is ten minutes, ah, like this, okay. This one will be better than this. The one. Okay, now go on to the next question. How far is the bus stop from Adi's home? 
Ah, uh, this cool. Okay, so bus stop, bus stop is here. Okay, one point five kilometers away from home. So from here to here, the school four point five. So you use four point five minus one point five, will give you three kilometers. Or you can count from here. Okay, this one is uh, one kilometer, two kilometer, three kilometers. Okay, next question. Um, they want us to express um, the time that we use for walking as a fraction of, of the time taken for the whole journey. So it's actually the time here has to, uh, as a fraction of the time in total. So the walking time is actually 15 minutes and then the total is um, 30 minutes. Okay, so you have this 15 out of 30. So which is, we simplify, it become one half. Okay, this question, I think uh, initially, I think I used the wrong as a key. So yeah, okay, I apologize. So please, uh, if I made a mistake, please, okay, for some of you, uh, some of you I did, okay, very possible. Then the rest of you, uh, yeah, okay, if I made a mistake, just come back to me. Okay, now next uh, line graph question, okay, this one is quite easy because they have this all these grid lines for you but on the other hand uh, because so many grid lines sometimes it can be very messy okay you cannot you must make sure that you use a ruler to see which one is the, the this the the numbers we are talking about huh so this one is a tap turn on for six minutes to fill our water okay this shows you the volume of the water in the end of the one minute okay so starting of course is the empty um uh tank so after one minute, it became 20 and so on. As you can see, this one is a straight line. So it's a linear relationship because the water is very consistently. Once you're turning up, right, up, then you just go continuously um, on a, at the rate. Is, that means the speed of water coming out is the same. Okay, uh, We'll talk about this later in next year or the year after. Huh? So how many water was in the tank at the end of the two minutes? Okay, One minute. 2 minutes okay so at the end of 2 minutes you have 40 liters okay remember all these numbers are in liters okay how long does it take to fill the 90 um, liter uh, the tank with 90 liter uh, 90 liters of water okay so 90 is here so it's number here ah so as you can see from here 90 okay down here is actually okay between these two uh, 4 and 5 minutes so down here is actually your 4 and a half minutes Okay, four and a half minutes can also, okay, but they want you to write in uh, how many minutes. So it's four minutes and 30 seconds. Okay, this one is a bit unfair because um, we, uh, we are going to get to how to do this um, that minute and second or, or, or those composite uh, units, okay, later. Okay, but for this one, just learn first, huh? Try first. Okay, how many, how much water was added to in the tank from two to five minutes so two minutes this is 40 okay five minutes is um 120 so 40 to um 40 to 100 and no, hold on, to five min oh minute five is 100 sorry 100 uh, so from here to here only so you have this 100 okay five minutes is 100 then this one is 40 so you get 100 minus 40 get 60 liters of water added into the tank okay so after six minutes the the tank is fully filled with water so what is the maximum what is the capacity which is capacity is how much the water how much water can the tank hold okay so it is yeah okay the maximum right what what can it hold so it's 120 liters which is here okay okay um now this is question five okay so the graph shows uh, exchange rate between Hong Kong dollars and Singapore dollars. Okay, so this one you give a table. You use must use this one. This one it have to be a straight line because the conversion rate is 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 doesn't change. Okay, but actually it can change. Huh? Okay, this one is not very realistic. But then again, since they tell you this, so the rate of exchange is actually quite fixed. Huh? so first, okay, uh, if Sing dollar there's one dollar Sing dollar. Okay, how much can you change? Six dollars. Okay, two you can change twelve. Okay, 
this one is not only at certain time. I think it should be at a uh, certain hour, a certain the time, like exact time. Huh? Okay, so yeah, because throughout the day, maybe it will change. Huh? But anyway, so you can see the consistency. Huh? So just uh, Singapore dollar do, drop, and so on, so on. Quite, it's quite simple. Huh? Um, so nine dollars of Hong Kong dollar, uh, nine Hong Kong dollars can change for. So nine dollars is actually in between this one. So you can change for one dollar fifty cents. Okay, this one decimal, but okay, easy decimal. Huh? Okay, four dollar fifty cents, which is this one, can change for this. Okay, as we know that this one, two units is six. One of the unit must be three. Okay, so down here, 24, this one must be 27. Huh? So, 27 dollars. Very simple. Okay, this question is actually meant to stretch a bit. Huh? Okay, and, and to see if we can predict something out of it. Okay, so let's take a look. Okay, they say that this person uh, lit a 12 cm candle. Okay, so after the uh, you lit really candle will only get shorter and shorter. Correct? Okay, um, yeah, not everybody like candle before again okay, nowadays. Okay, so but anyway, candle is just something like this. Okay, then you have um, the okay, then the flame will be here. So the height of candle is we're talking about this. Okay, so as you light up longer and longer, you became shorter and shorter, correct? So now this is what you show, huh? It started from 12 cm. Okay, one hour later, four hours. Well, this candle is quite, quite durable. Huh? Okay. okay, so the hard length of the candle burn after four hours. So after four hours, it is actually at um, 4 cm. Correct? So one to know the length of the candle burn. That means they want to know how much is burned away. So it's actually 12 minus 4, which is equals to 8 cm. Okay, so using the graph, which is the uh, which of the following is true? Okay, the first of all they say that the candle burns at a steady rate. That means at a very constant rate, huh? No change. Not say burn fast, burn slow. Okay, then um, the candle goes out in three hours, which is not true. This one is out. Okay, so we try to use deduction, huh? The candle burn faster as it goes shorter. Okay, as you go shorter, as you can see from here. I go shorter and shorter. The the thing is still burning quite steadily. From here is like every two every hour it reduced by two uh, cm. Okay, every hour one hour two cm two cm two cm. Okay, so you can see that this is quite a steady la, huh? quite a steady one. So it doesn't uh, burn faster when it's shorter. Um, and it okay it doesn't burn any slower also. So this one is strong. So it actually burn at a very steady rate. Which is A. Okay? This one is from what you did. Okay? So if you, in order to okay, just since we are here, huh? Okay, uh you if we burn at a faster and faster rate, a slower uh faster and faster rate you'll be like this. Okay. Okay, as you go first of all, one hour at like this, as you can see, okay, one hour it dip by very little. Okay. You can see from this right here, okay, but a little deep now it dip a bit more. Then after one more, one more hour, you actually dip even more. As you go shorter and shorter, you actually dip a lot more. If this is the graph, then it is okay. But this one is a straight line graph, huh? So you want to see the opposite, okay? One go slower and slower, it will be something like this, okay? Oops. Like this, okay. So until until the end, okay. So first hour it actually burn very fast, okay. Second hour it burn, okay. This part, actually go down this part this much. Then second hour it actually go down little, okay. Then so on so forth. So as you go longer and longer, okay, it get burn slower. This one is if it burn slower, okay. So this one is, um, burn slower. This one is burn faster okay so it's just an extra huh? so okay but if it's a straight line it should be steady rate okay that's it